Hello everyone and welcome to a retest of my model of the Suzy spacecraft proposed by Ariane Group. I have made a few changes and I will release this version so there will be a link in the video description. Among the changes that I made, uh, there should be a hatch right now that we'll test that. I'll still release it if it turns out that the, uh, the hatch does not work, uh, but uh, hopefully it will. And then we also have nodes in the bay that I didn't have before. Uh, so we have two nodes there. I haven't made the docking port arrangement. Somebody asked about how it would dock to the station. There would be a docking port arrangement in the front here, just like there was with the shuttle, probably. Uh, so that is the idea. And so, yeah, I haven't made that, but, uh, you know, you can use other parts. Uh, I think the shuttle parts might fit in here if you have the shuttle airlock. Uh, I haven't double-checked that, though. I've added the solar panels only weekly, as you can see, uh, not, not in a very fancy way, I just slapped them on, so, uh, but they'll work, uh, that I've tested, so they do recharge the vessel, and uh, I've adjusted the engines a little bit so that they can gimbal uh, for landing, and that'll help, oh, I forgot the extra flaps here, now I haven't changed the flaps, somebody suggested splitting the flaps uh, in order to control roll, and well, their their model did not show that, so I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll just leave that be for now. We will just make sure it is the pitch ones, and then these will be the yaw ones. And actually, probably 15% will prevent it from clipping into the thing in there, the service module portion. But we'll leave it be for now. I have not added RCS thrusters for control, roll control after the boosters separate. Uh, somebody suggested that. And the reason for that is that we would have to add RCS fuel to the first stage. If we add uh, those RCS thrusters to the second stage and enable them, then the thrusters that are already in here will be enabled as well because you can, well, I guess you can have multiple sets of RCS thrusters, but I've never done that. Uh, so. Yeah, I've, I'll think about it. Uh, if I can put two different sets of RCS thrusters and enable them separately, like there's two separate icons, but I don't think you can have two separate icons for staging the RCS thrusters. So uh, it's complicated. And, you know, if if you stage the RCS thrusters on this stage, uh, these will start up as well. And the fact that they're in this inner stage will make no difference. So, yeah, lots of considerations there. I have changed the launcher a bit. Uh, Pekka had adjusted the decouplers so that they don't spin. Uh, so we actually probably won't have any residual roll after we separate them. So that'll be good. I also uh, reconsidered the thrust of the boosters, uh, looking at various stats from not only Wikipedia, but also other websites. It seems like the boosters are supposed to have much more thrust than I initially gave them. And so I just did thrust and sort of made up a thrust curve because going with the original thrust curve, they would end up exhausting themselves too early. So I I don't know what the actual thrust curve on them is, but apparently it's not the same as Ariane 5's thrust curve. So I had to readjust it so that we can have them have the duration that they're supposed to have while also having the max thrust that they're supposed to have. And I trust that the max thrust is very close to the start because it makes no sense to have these have a lot of thrust midway when there isn't as much fuel to lift. So those are the adjustments. I've also made a launch script for it and uh, we will see whether that works out to get this to orbit. We won't go to the station orbit just yet uh, we didn't quite make it to the regular orbit, the regular orbit out of Kourou being a 5 degree inclination. We'll try that again, and then we'll work our way up to the 51.6 degrees for the ISS. It's possible that for the ISS, it doesn't actually carry the full 7 tons. I'm not sure. So the 7 ton payload that they specified may only be to a regular low Earth orbit instead of to the station. Uh, I, I wasn't entirely clear about that. So... Because there's a big difference between getting it to the 5 degree inclination and how much you can carry to a 51.6 degree inclination. Okay, so with all that being said, let me take it out and we'll clear the other test. Oh, uh, we want those peoples. Oh, I hope we have some kerbals. We can't test the hatch otherwise. 
Okay, we have some additional cribbles. All right, let's see, EVA. Okay, oh, um, the camera has gone somewhere else. But, oh, and Magsy's facing this way. Uh, I'll fix that on a subsequent update. <laughs> at, at least, uh, yeah, the, okay, everything has to face the, uh, okay. All right, all right. Uh, there's a little bit of slidiness, but it's okay. Bored. Minor inconvenience. I don't know what happened with the camera. I guess that's because of the flipped state. The little colliders that are for the airlock and ladder need to be facing the other way. Okay. Well, at least they can get in and out. So we'll release it like that, but uh, I'll change that for another update. Okay, SAS on. Uh, well, actually, we do not do that. We are going to use the KOS script. And I've had to make substantial adjustments to my regular KOS script because, of course, Ariane is meant to go to geosynchronous orbit, and carrying a heavy load to low Earth orbit is a pain with it. And so I've cooked up a new function just for these geosynchronous orbit launchers that are being retasked for low Earth orbit operations and thus have to use their entire Hydrolox upper stage in order to do that. Which is always interesting. So this has quite a lot of thrust weight ratio at the start, 2 Gs. That based on how much thrust the boosters are supposed to have, and it seems like multiple sources say they have this much. I've tried to make the thrust curve so that the g-force is fairly constant. Ignore the throttle down, that's just something the script does. None of these things actually throttle down according to that throttle anyway. Well, any crew on this rocket will surely feel launch. <laughs> you can see through all that the thrust weight ratio is fairly constant. It'll have to creep up here otherwise we'll never get done with the propellant. So I'm just putting the Suzy spacecraft in with the Ariane 6 because that's simpler. And so it'll be part of the real rockets pack even though it's not technically a real rocket per se. That makes the real rockets pack a little bit bigger, unfortunately. But that's how it'll be. So off go those thanks to Pekka's little adjustment, and so we don't have any residual roll here at this point. Though it's trying to. <laughs> There's apparently some roll that it's trying to stop. Well, I'm gonna fizz warp here. I'll probably roll much more substantially during that. As usual with these kinds of rockets, it's gonna have to overshoot the target apoapsis come back down. Okay, staging. And here we are on the Vinci engine. The script is not told to turn it back to a zero degree roll or anything like that, so it's just holding roll. Well, it looks good. All right, so we have 142 meters per second left. I don't know if that would be enough to get us over to the ISS. I mean, uh, uh, get into the ISS inclination on launch. Uh, probably that's a little bit too low. But then, of course, this could just be left on a suborbital trajectory and the spacecraft could complete orbit at that point. So, yeah, separation. And let's get this started. So with the 7 tons of cargo, right now I've got 475 meters per second. I also upped the amount of propellant that we have, because it seemed like we wouldn't have as much as I would like. And we're now at 25.458 tons, so that's a little bit high. Uh, we, 
I don't know if I want to reduce the amount of propellant or whether I want to reduce the amount of structural mass. Uh, we could reduce the mass of the engines, for instance. Uh, if they could have really tight little engines, you know, that's always possible. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if they've actually... Uh, the food, water, and oxygen could potentially be considered part of the cargo 7 tons. Uh, I don't think it's a whole point uh, four, five, eight tons worth of food, water, and oxygen right there, but... Um, it's not, it's not too far short. 220 liters of water is 220 kilograms, so it's a fair amount of uh, supplies there. I don't know whether that's counted as cargo or not. So there are questions. There are a lot of questions. So uh, right now we are not recharging, but if we reorient so that we can get sunlight, we see that we do recharge with the solar panels in the bay. And let me just verify, close bay, and it immediately says that the electric charge is not recharging, so. Okay, well, I don't know whether it's supposed to carry down the 7 tons. I'm not. Uh, we can decouple. Now, without the 7 tons, you can see it's got a healthy uh, 676 meters per second. And we'll go right into the re-entry test. I'll circularize first. I only want to use... I'm sure they wouldn't use the abort engines. Oops, wrong thing. Uh, I'm sure they wouldn't use the abort engines in order to do any corrections here. But I will. It's tough to click the engines. That worries me a bit. That's why I'm testing them. because they might be embedded in the collider of the vehicle. Well, I guess we'll do it like that. I want to make sure that they can produce the thrust that they're supposed to with the placement that they have. Yes, they can. Okay, that'll be good enough. I don't think we can get back to Kuru, but we might as well try. Normally they would do all these burns with the RCS, but I don't have the patience. And I'll go with a 24 kilometer periapsis this time. Obviously it would have less fuel remaining for station operations and everything. And maybe we should simulate that a little bit. Hold on. I'll lift the orbit back up and then pull it back down again just to get rid of some more of the fuel. Okay, well, that's a little bit higher of a periapsis than I wanted, so we'll readjust that. But yeah, now we're down to 343 meters per second. We have less than half of the fuel that we started off with. Okay, here we go. Entering Earth's atmosphere again. Now the cabin still doesn't look right, uh, it doesn't have the four windows, it's just my generic cabin. So... That is one thing I have not changed. Making internals is a whole other business. Okay, well it's using some control here. As we hit 100 kilometers, it's still needing to keep the nose up. So the center mass is too far forward, and roll control is predictably not great. That will use a lot of our intended landing propellant, unfortunately. So, well, roll control is coming back to zero and then going on to the other side. That's actually not a bad sign. The pitch, though, still needs to be adjusted. And we're not holding the full 60 degrees anymore. Right now, the fact that the fuel is just part of the body, in other words, this service module is not a separate part, uh, means that the center mass doesn't shift all that much uh, with the depletion of fuel. In fact, it probably shifts the wrong way because the flaps 
the legs and the engines are separate parts. So that skews things a bit, the fact that the fuel is not in a separate part when it depletes. I may reconsider that. Well, we're currently here. We'll probably overshoot, Kuru. Well, it's getting a little bit wobblier. It's possible a KOS script can handle it better, but... Well, we're getting some lift. We're going to start going up a bit. But it's going all over the place right now. Can we call these weird S turns? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe they're weird S turns. We only need two engines for landing, by the way. Of course, uh, four are only four abort. And so I said that they had eight down there. Uh, that sort of makes sense in a way. Uh, because otherwise these need to be able to throttle about 50% or somewhat below 50%. But if you've got eight, then they don't need to throttle that low. Yeah, we are passing by Kuru. And still pretty fast. Ah, there it is. Since it can't hold 60, I'll just tell it to do, go to 40 or something. Hopefully that doesn't throw it off. Okay, yeah, that, that might help the wiggles a bit. If it's not doing pitch excessively. But we're certainly killing our chances to actually land with this because we've used too much RCS fuel and basically the solution is just figuring out where exactly to put the center of mass and center of lift. The center of mass shouldn't be changed really but the center of lift can be moved because we don't know exactly how the body lift is working on this. Well, there's some part that's overheating a bit. I think it's the flap there. Which is currently clipping too much. Let me see if we could... I don't know if it'll help it to stop it from clipping. Probably not. Clip more. Clip more. <laughs> the problem is we couldn't hold the 60 degree pitch earlier. So now we're a little bit hotter coming into this part. Which has killed that one little flap down there. I wonder if we overextend this top one, whether that gives more control. And I've turned off the RCS to see how much the flaps actually do. Well, they definitely don't do roll, so... I mean, there are various ways to rebalance this. We're carrying quite a bit of food. We dump that. Uh, that doesn't have much of an effect. We are going to run out of all of our Delta V, even though we had quite a lot of it coming into the atmosphere. Okay, we have no more RCS propellant now. I'm not entirely sure what would stop it from rolling, but I guess to some extent the yaw controls do produce a bit of a roll moment. But it's definitely leaning to one side a bit. There's no reaction wheel on here, of course. Okay, well, basically it can survive through re-entry minus one flap down there. But obviously there's still a lot of work to be done. Oh, it would have been better to have some parachutes at this point. I do recommend parachutes. So yes, as our Kerbals will no doubt meet their demise, I'm not going to belabor that. We are going to have to do some fixes to this, but I will put what I have right now in the video description as part of the Real Rockets pack. And you can maybe figure it out on your own. You could put some lead weight in the tail uh, a little bit. Well, you'll have to put your own separate container or something, but uh, because this is just part of the main body. But uh, that could rebalance it just enough. Or you could somehow take some mass out of the body in order to keep the balance, but... Anyway, there are various ways of fixing this, and I will see what I can do in the future. 
But for now, I'll give it to you guys in the video description and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.